iPhone screen mirroring on your Mac. Yes, it is finally here. If you're using the uh, Mac OS Sequoia uh, beta, beta 2 specifically, and if you have uh, the iOS 18 beta on your phone, then yes, you can now mirror your iPhone on your Mac. As you can see right here, this is pretty much my home screen. Um, all of my apps are here. Yeah, it works uh, pretty well. You can do anything here, almost anything. I'll talk about that in a minute and some of the things that you cannot do. But you can do pretty much anything and you can run any of the apps. I can just open the browser right here if I want. And uh, yeah, it uh, works just fine. It's uh, it's fast. There is no sort of noticeable lag. It's beta, so sometimes it's a little jittery, but most of the time um, it's absolutely fine. If I open uh, an app which has audio, Let's open the BBC sounds and sort of play it. Then, when you said in the right. yeah, yeah, it works. Um, dinner tonight. What's what gonna? The audio comes out of the Mac speakers, which is nice. And so, yeah, it works absolutely as you would expect it to work. Um, it's quite frictionless. The first time you use it, it sort of takes you through a welcome screen and asks you to put in the password. But now that I have put in the password. Um, I don't have to do it every time and so you know if the phone is nearby and if it is if Bluetooth is on on both devices if they are on the same Wi-Fi network and if you are logged into your Apple account on on both of those devices and the phone is within range it'll just pop up you get this uh, iPhone mirroring um, icon over here so let you let me just shut it down start again just to show you how it's happened so I'll just quit it here and if I go to mirroring connecting to iPhone 51 there you go boom I'm in very frictionless very apple it just works absolutely fine and yes you do get notifications so these top um three notifications are actually on my phone uh and i'm able to sort of uh yeah i'm able to use them here and they even stack up properly like you would expect and they're showing in my notification center on my mac so that's very handy um there are some controls available to you so let me just take you through those and then we'll talk about what, what it's good for right so let me just show you the controls first and then we'll talk about what it's good for so if you are in the middle of an app uh, let's say the browser again and if you click down here on this line like so it'll take you to home you don't have to swipe it up you just click and you're there also if you go up here you get this little view and you click here you get this uh, and then with the two finger swipe you can actually swipe back and forth um what else you can if you go here uh so use the keyboard shortcut so home uh, the uh command key one two and three will go take you to the home screen the app switcher and the spotlight so let's just start, try the spotlight and you can you know just type something in here youtube for example just like you would on your standard uh on, on your iphone itself and it, it works just fine um how do i go back okay there we go and so I just use command one now to go home. There you go. Uh, so this works absolutely fine, uh, which brings us to the next question, which is to say, what is it good for? Why should I even use it? Well, I, I've been playing around for like almost a day. And for the first thing I've noticed is, you know, it doesn't take a lot of resources. It just sort of sits there. It's completely frictionless. And so, you know, the question is kind of moot. If you have your iPhone nearby, you give it access you open the window at least you will get your notifications which is nice um, but also if you have some apps which are only available on the iphone and the mac equivalents are not very good or they're not available or they're in the browser but you know sometimes browser implementations are not that good then it's very handy indeed now for me uh, i'm not much into gaming obviously the games would fall into that category but for me, the main category of these uh, apps is sort of my home control apps and my banking apps. I haven't tried the banking apps yet um, because it's a beta and I don't want to mess up anything. But in terms of the whole home control apps, I have a lot of life exposed around the house. And if, uh, I've never been able to control them from the Mac because there's no app on the Mac for those. There's a browser thing, but it's, it's, it just doesn't work for me. And now I can just turn my lights on or off right from my Mac. So that's handy. That's a use case that I can sort of use immediately. Um, same as with the calculator, right? So I use this P Calc calculator, which I really like. And uh, there is a Mac version, but it's a paid Mac version, and I never bought that. Now, if I want to use it on the Mac, I can. And uh, yeah, I'm by the way using the Mac keyboard. I'm not clicking, as you can see. And so yeah, it does map the Mac keyboard onto this, and I'm able to press Enter to get the equals uh, sign, and it works absolutely fine. Um, and uh, so yeah, so so these are some of the use cases, and of course the more apps 
that you fall for you into that category apps for which are available on the iphone and not on the mac the more use you will get from it but i mean it's just neat it's one of those really good apple things the other thing that i noticed about it is that it doesn't really require a lot of resources so if i go to activity monitor and let me just find it here uh there will be screen mirroring. here we go iphone mirroring right here it's taking about 32 megabytes megabytes this is almost nothing negligible memory and it just sits there in the background doesn't take up any of your resources and the interesting thing is sorry that was my other alarm going off the interesting thing is that if i now open something here for example if i'm here and i open uh let's just uh, do the finder to find youtube there we go and actually if i play something there we go if i play this for example uh it starts playing and that's the ad and uh, you notice that it doesn't do anything to the usage over here right I'm just mute that uh because it's actually running on the phone it's not running here and as soon as i did this i on my lock screen on my phone i can now see the little media control thing that 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 happens um it's actually physically running on the phone so it's not taking any resources from the mac it's not like an emulator like you get with xcode it's actually mirroring uh, so that's quite a neat and and also it handles the let's let see what happens if i go full screen let's look at this so if i click on full screen it automatically goes into landscape mode so you know i could just have it running think of it as an extra window on your mac which does not take any resources and you can do things with it uh, if you have an intensive sort of process that runs in the background you can just leave it alone so it's very nice that it does not use any uh, resources in the mac um let me just go back here the other thing i noticed is that for example if there's an app that requires uh so for, for example access to the uh, sensors on the iphone that works great too and i'll give you an example again i will go to the one two yeah three uh, there's an app called sky sorry some it is a little okay so i can't type right now it is beta and so you'd expect a few problems and i am getting that right now so i'm just going to go straight into my app drawer and find it from there uh, it's a little harder to find from there so let me just try the okay there we go there we go okay. so the sky guide app now the sky guide app is interesting uh, because it actually has a compass feature so it shows you the sky and as you move your phone sort of the views updates and it's showing me with the compass on now if i pick up my phone and i'm picking it up right now see what happens it is actually changing the view and that's because it has access to the gyroscopes uh, and all the controls on the on the iphone because it's actually running on the iphone and you notice that the memory usage is still the same and so yeah you're running it natively on the phone and you're just getting the display on this now you can't run things simultaneously on the phone and on the uh, on this thing in fact the phone is right now locked if i were to pick it up and i'm just picking it up right now as soon as i unlock it you immediately get this little message saying iphone in use mirroring has to end it during iphone use so you can either be using the phone directly or you can use it here now i put the phone down and as i say, try again connects again and boom i'm back right so 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 you have you, you can't be using both at the same time now in terms of sort of the usage like i said one usage is notifications the other is if you don't have any apps the other thing is if you you know forget your phone in another room i guess because i tried it and as long as you're within bluetooth range i think it'll work because i tried it in the next room and so if you you know if you sit down on your mac you're deep in work and you suddenly remember that you know you have this app and you have to check your notification or something and your iphone is actually in the other room uh, and if you're really really lazy like me you don't have to get up and uh, you can just um, you know do screen mirroring it'll take a second and it'll work from across the room or even from the other room as well so that's quite handy so there you go i think we are still in beta 2 and we will probably have more things added as you go um, by the way one of the things that you cannot do is to use the camera i tried doing that um it doesn't do anything uh, you know I, I, i've tried and i've tried but uh where is the camera app here we go if i try to open it up nothing really happens iphone camera is not available from the back therefore it's just told you i even tried to flip the camera maybe the front view will do something but it does not maybe it will become available as we go through the beta cycle maybe not the other thing is that you can't get the control center i tried swiping down from here and clicking here and there but no you can't get the control center 
That I wish we would get because with iOS 18, the control center itself is much more functional and it would be really nice to have that available over here. Uh, will we get it? I don't know. So, you know, a couple of things that you still can't do over here, but other than that, it works pretty much as you would expect it to work. I guess my final thoughts on this is that, you know, this is another case of Apple making things easy for us. Uh, if you are in the Apple, Apple ecosystem, A, it makes things much more frictionless. It also makes it much harder to leave the Apple eco ecosystem, but also you're just getting extra value. I mean, the phone that I'm mirroring right now, by the way, is an iPhone 11. Now, I bought that phone almost four years ago, I think a little bit more than well, something like four years ago. And at the time that I bought it, you know, there were no uh, Silicon Macs, there was no mirroring, etc. So after, you know, the phone is full of scratches and it's, it's, it's the battery is half what it used to be, but it still gets me through a light day of usage. And so I still use it. I have a newer iPhone, but I still use it as a backup, which is why I have the beta on it. And after four years of usage, suddenly I get new value from it. And I think that's what Apple does extremely well. If you stay within the Apple ecosystem, yes, there are some constraints, but they make it up here. Uh, they make it worth your while uh, with, with small touches like this. So I find this quite, uh, quite, quite, quite handy. Uh, will I use it a lot? I don't think so because, I, like I said, I don't have a lot of these kind of apps. But it will be there. And if some days, uh, you know, if I need something, it's just right there. Uh, the one thing that, by the way, it does not support yet is uh, file drag and drop. So I can't just click on a file on the desktop and drag it here. Uh, I tried that. Uh, I don't have any file right now, but I have tried it. Does not work, but I think that was announced. Uh, in the WWDC, so I think as the uh, as 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 we move forward in the beta cycle, that'll probably become available. And so there you have it: uh, mirroring off your iPhone onto your Mac. Very cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks.